Hi all, I'm Catherine Randalls, Manager of Research Data Services in the eResearch Centre at JCU. Our team connects researchers to technology and the community, and today I will be covering the management of data and information in research. This is Module 4, Data Publication. A data publication is a public metadata record of the data and information generated as part of your research project. Data publications include DOIs, licenses, data descriptions and the access conditions for your data and information. These then are the parameters that ensure your research data and information can be correctly cited, attributed, interpreted and reused. It is important to note that you must have a data record in order to create one or more related data publications. The University has developed a data management platform called Research Data JCU. This is a user-friendly system with lots of help text, questions with prompts and links for further information. Help text is found throughout the system by simply clicking on the question mark icon. Research Data JCU guides researchers to develop three records. One, a research data management plan, two, a data record and three, a data publication. Access to this platform is via the URL provided and detailed log instructions are provided in Module 1 Overview under Section 1.5. The metadata from your data publications are then harvested by Research Data Australia and other online services such as Google Data Search and JCU's Research Portfolio. Now that you understand this process, you can see how valuable it is in increasing the visibility of your work and, of course, why we need to make sure that confidential or sensitive information is not included in your metadata record. A data publication can be completed at different times throughout your research project. As you can see in the table, sometimes a data publication is created during your project, for example, when publishing thesis, cha thesis chapters, or it can be at the completion of your project. You can also embargo your data for a specific time period. If selected, this data publication will be securely embargoed until the time requested. At that point, access to the data will be permitted to the level you have specified under access conditions. Remembering a data publication can only be completed once you have a data record. It is also important to note we launched our new data repository platform, which is Research Data JCU, in January of 2021. So that means that any projects commencing from 2021 onwards require a research data management plan, data publication, sorry, data record and data publication. For example, if you're a HDR candidate and in 2021 are already partway through your research project, a data record and data publication is required, but you are not required to retrospectively complete a research data management plan. The added bonus of linking your data publication from your data record is, is that some of the fields will be auto-populated, saving you um, entry and time. And it's for this reason that we strongly recommend you go back and update your data record before creating a data publication. Once you are in a, your data record, you do have the option to further edit by clicking Edit This Record. Or, if you are happy to proceed, simply click Create a Data Publication from this record and magically you will find yourself in a data publication. Alternatively, you can also create a data publication by clicking Create Data Publication. If you choose this option, you will be required to manually link the data publication to your existing data record. You can at any stage go back to view and update a data publication before you finalise your record and submit for publication. You are now ready to complete a data publication. As with the previous sessions, I won't step you through all of the fields of the data publication, but will focus on just a couple of key areas. It's also handy to note that once you have created your data publication, you should get into the habit of saving this as you progress. The save icon is at the bottom of every tab. The information you provide in this metadata record is important as it is what other researchers will view. You also can create several data publications from one data record. So if you do choose to do this, then 
particular attention must be given and accurate descriptions provided in order to differentiate your data publications clearly from one another. Firstly, you will need to link your data record if you haven't already done so. Although the data publication title will autofill from your data record, you may decide to change this field to better reflect or differentiate each particular subset of data, for example, for example data chapters in a thesis. It's important to know that each data publication title will appear in your data citations. The description field is the most important part of your data publication. It needs to describe why the data was collected, what it consists of and in some detail, and how it was collected or analysed. This helps other researchers discover and understand your data and to use it correctly. If your description lacks sufficient detail, the reviewer will contact you for further information before publishing. If, however, you'd like to add further descriptors, such as a brief summary or notes, you can enter these details under Other Descriptors and choose then a relevant descriptor type. These fields are helpful should you wish to provide additional information that may be particularly useful to or significant for other researchers. For example, you could add information about formats or special software needed to handle files to the text box under Descriptor and then select the Note Descriptor type. We also recommend that you include a brief descriptor, just of one or two sentences, that describes your data set in a way that is understandable to the layperson. This allows other researchers viewing your metadata record on the Research Data Australian portal to understand what your data consists of and whether it's relevant to them. Remember, your data could be useful to researchers from other disciplines who may wish to collaborate with you. Next, you'll need to select the data you want included in your data publication. First, you need to decide if you are going to publish metadata only with no data. So this is really just a public facing record which includes an overarching summary of your data to provide context for other researchers about your project and specifically the research data and information that supports your research outcome. Think of this as an announcement to the world. This is appropriate when your data contains sensitivities and none of the files can then be made publicly available. You are encouraged to select some or all of the data from your data record for publication. However, this will be purely based on the type of research data and information you have. For example, although you will not make sensitive data publicly available, so you do not tick select the select data checkbox for these attachments or locations, you may select supporting documentation such as interview guides or code books as they provide context. Now you need to choose the access conditions that best describes your data as a whole. So choose the access condition that is relevant for the majority of the data files. The three access conditions are open access, this is where data and information is publicly available, conditional access, where access needs to be negotiated through the data manager, or restricted access. So here only the metadata record is available because of sensitivities or contractual requirements and they can also include the supporting documentation once again if it contains no sens sensitivities. But restricted access means no data access. Remembering that the whole point of the data record is to list all the data locations and attachments and then the data publication is to select only what you want to be made public. You can also have one data record associated with several data publications, or it can be a one-to-one -one ratio. If you're making this decision after you've completed your data record, it's easy to go back to your data record and load the additional data files, then click Save and Close. Then can come back to this section in the data publication and click Refresh Data from Related Data Record and then your new data will appear. This slide demonstrates how to choose the data files you wish to make public. You can also see on the slide that it is totally possible to have sensitive data that has been de-identified. An example is the Pregnancy and Lifestyle Study, which contained highly sensitive data. Several techniques were used to de-identify the data set, 
In this case, the identifiers and the dates of birth have been removed, ages have been aggregated into bands, and postcodes were excluded. This was done as it would be possible to re-identify participants for combining a rural postcode with a rare occupation, as an example. This data set was then assigned open access and made available to the public. Also, depending on the data, you can assign conditional access for de-identified data. The best way forward is often discussed with your primary advisor and then the reviewer. JCU wants to provide our researchers with the broadest possible acknowledgement and recognition. So whilst your data might need to be protected, the metadata enables what your research is about to be made publicly available. So just to recap, the system has been designed so that only the data, either the attachments or links, you have selected will be made visible to the public and available for download. And it's the, only the metadata record that is harvested to RDA. The license tab is important if you have data with open access conditions, as this means the data will be made publicly available and therefore must have an appropriate license assigned. As too should data with conditional access. This data will not be made publicly available. However, should this data be requested and access granted, the requester must adhere to the specific license conditions you have assigned. It is recommended at this point that you assign a Creative Commons license to make sure that your data can be attributed to you correctly and that the conditions for, it, for its reuse are explicit. There's a direct link to the various types of Creating Com Commons licenses available. If you choose to use another type of license that isn't included in the drop-down box, you'll need to include this information under Other Licenses. The statement of rights in data is so important, I can't stress this enough. This is about identifying any contractual arrangements your data have and ensuring the conditions you have allocated to your data adheres to the contract terms. For example, you have, an you have assigned open access conditions to the data, however your project is externally funded. The contract with your funder states that they own the data, so you cannot then assign open access to share the data even though it does not contain any sensitivities. It's your responsibility to make sure that the data reflects the conditions of the contract you entered. You'll also need to name the data owners for all of the data. For example, it could be JCU, or if you're a HDR candidate, you could you need to add, into, add in yourself, or if relevant, add in a third party. The next screenshot is the citation tab. This is where you can request a DOI, Digital Object Identifier. A DOI is used to permanently identify a document and link it to the web. Think of it like a tax file number for the document you're citing. It will always refer to that document and only that one. While a web address, a URL, might change, the DOI will never change. You can have a DOI for open or conditional as long as access is possible, and you must apply a license for conditions as these will apply if access is granted. The Submit tab is where you can choose an embargo period. For example, you may wish to delay the release of your data publication until your other research outputs, such as a paper associated with the data, are accepted or published. We understand that determining the embargo date can be tricky, as you may be unsure when your paper is accepted or published. So please note that embargoes are not lifted automatically by the system. The system reviewer will always check for publication, so give as much detail about upcoming publications in the notes. A couple of other things to know here are each data publication is reviewed by a reviewer, so it's important that you check your records are completed in full and that they make sense. The system reviewer does not review your submitted records and, oh sorry, does, the system reviewer, sorry, does review your submitted records and can offer concrete general advice as well as advice for managing sensitivities, but they are not responsible for your data. Once you've submitted your data publication, it can only be edited by the reviewer. The reviewers are Claire Mead and Nathan Garvey, Dr. Nathan Garvey, who are in our library team. You also have a section here to add any notes or information you want the reviewer to be aware of, although this isn't mandatory.
Lastly, you need to read and agree to the data declaration. Once you're satisfied with your data publication, click Submit for Publication. Congratulations, you've now completed a data publication in Research Data JCU. If you have any more data to publish, simply follow the steps again to create additional data publications. Thank you for joining me.